So you're missing your, your front teeth? I only have six teeth in my mouth. How do you chew? I gum everything. Really? So you don't eat steak? I do. There are certain foods that I eat that I have to cut in small pieces and pretty much I just swallow them whole. Just like a snake does. That, no, I'm sure you still the nutrients. Yeah. So it's taken some time to get used to it, a different way of eating. So, you know, there are different things that change in my life because of my transformation and eating is one of them. The, the hearing is another part. Everything is much louder to me now. Oh, really? Oh my God, yeah. Like, and whenever fires, uh, like sirens and things go by, I just want to cover my ears and say, make it stop, make it stop. <laughs> There's a lot of sirens in this. <laughs> yeah, there is. But um, yeah, no, I have had 32 teeth removed. That's commitment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I only have six teeth in my mouth representing the mouth of the rattlesnake. At the, this present time, I have a female chest, because I have breasts mm -hmm. that were developed through hormones. So they're natural breasts. I love them so much. And, but I also have um, male genitals down here, um, only the penis. The, the, I had a, uh, my testicles removed last year. So I am a eunuch right now. If you see the pattern of what's going on, there's several stages of evolution. So my transformation is a metamorphosis. And I will reach the end stage as a full dragon when I have all my procedures completed, including a panectomy, which is coming and it's coming off. Mm -hmm. Because I'm not going to get a vagina. I'm just going to get a panectomy. So I will be a genderless dragon. That's what dragons are. What is your name? My name is Tiamat Legion Medusa. And you are? I am known as the Dragon Lady because I am the Dragon Lady. Yes, you <laughs> I am. A, are. I am the world's most modified transsexual. I am a uh, an individual going through the process of two major transitions: life-changing transitions, life-forming transitions, and life-giving transitions. It's not just going through a transition; it's a different life. So, like being reborn. I, I, I think of myself as being a real life example of being born again <clears throat> because I am morphing through body modification into a human dragon. It's conceptual body art. And um, I'm also in the process of um, becoming uh, a woman. I'm male to female transsexual. I, I decided when I just started my, my transition, which was um, it's 22 years ago, that I was going to live my life, do me, and if people didn't like it, and some people are really, really ugly, but a lot of people like Los Angeles has received me with open arms and welcomed me here. Where are you from? I'm from Houston, Texas. Houston, Texas. Yes. Okay. When I first got here, I was in the middle of Skid Row uh, in, 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 a, in, a, in a shelter because I, I ended up homeless. Oh my God. So uh, for a month and a half. I can't imagine what that was. Oh my, oh my Lucifer. It was just, <laughs> it's, it was crazy. And so right now I'm on the outskirts of Skid Row and it's great because I love where I am now. Yeah. I lived a miserable childhood and early teen life and early adult life. Um, and one of the reasons that it was life was miserable for me is because I was born in the wrong body. I was born in a boy's body and everyone always treated me like a boy. I had to do boy things and, and act like a boy and pretend to like girls and, and, and all that until I finally said, you know, and I was a teenager. I think I was a, freshman in high school. And I said, you know what? I'm done with this. I don't care if I'm the only person in town that's gay. I'm going to be openly gay. And I walked down the streets of the, of the town, up and down, screaming at the top of my lungs, I'm gay! I'm gay! <laughs> <laughs> and this, this was a little town. It's quite, you beat up in Texas. 
Oh yeah, I mean this is like close to the uh, the uh, Laredo, the Mexican U.S. Bo uh, border at Laredo, Texas, and it's very male machismo down there. And and here I was shouting that I was gay, and I didn't give a damn who and who who said what about it. So this, this is in your DNA. This is this is kind of who you are. To yeah. Push these buttons. Oh anyway, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So even as a child, you were doing it. Yes, yeah. I never hid it. I never. I was never in the closet. Closets are for clothes and tennis shoes. Yeah. Well, I decided when I um, I became HIV positive. I was I used to be a banker, and I became HIV positive, and I left the bank to take care of my health. And I almost died. And while I was dying, at one point, I decided I'm not going to die like like a human. So I decided making my transformation because that's something I was wanting to do. And I figured that did you, did that was. Did you think that you were dying? At yes. Some point? So yeah. why not just do something crazy? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to do this my way. I decided I'm going to do this my way, and uh, that's one of the reasons why it doesn't really bother me when people, like people, make fun of me or criticize me, or whatever. Like whatever. They don't know what you've been through. Yeah, yeah, they don't know what I've been through. This life made me what I am. No, you know? you, something happened to you also when you were younger. Uh, I heard a story. You were raped or something like this. Yes. At what yes. Age, what age was that? I was 18 years old. And I had just graduated from high school and uh, left the little town that I grew up in and graduated from. I had just left. I had just graduated that year and I came here that fall. And um, yeah, that's that's what had happened. Uh, but you know, um, that's one of the many things in life that has made me who I am and what I am today. That's just one of the things, uh, of the many things that have happened to me in life. Um, because I was raised to be obedient, you know, and you, you meet someone and you fall in love and you're, you're with them forever and ever. That's the mentality I grew up with. And so life dealt me some really uh, um, rude awakenings along the way, along life. But what happened when I was 18 years old, I was like fresh from the sticks. I mean, I come from a little town. It's a, a town of 300 people, oh, yeah. including the, the ranches, that, 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 the outlying ranches from the little town. So it's a very, very tiny town. And uh, so I came from that and went to a city of skyscrapers. And I'd stand there and I'd look up at the skyscrapers and I'd get dizzy. And I'm like, oh my god, what's going on here? This is Houston? Yeah, in Houston. So um, I didn't know that you couldn't trust just anyone. And I was in a situation where I wasn't asking for help. I didn't know what to do. And, so, and help presented itself. But little did I know that it was um, there was someone who would do me wrong, and ended up doing me wrong. And but um, you know, I don't even hate the people that did it. It was two guys because I'm not them. I, I I would I would be the first person to stand on the mountain and say, "Don't do what I've done." Did you ever have regrets? Oh, hell no. No? Did no, you wake no. up in the mirror and go, oh, fuck, I did that? No. Uh -uh. <laughs> never. Never. Good. You know, you don't do something like what I've done to myself to, to later on regret. you know, regret it. Yeah. No, you have to know right up from the very front, am I or am I not going to regret this 10 years from now? And when I started, I said, hey, I'm not going to regret it. I'm going to be happy. People who live, uh, whom I've lived with, and like my neighbors where I live right now, everybody just loves me. They're like they, they, they just like everybody's like taking me under their wing. Your energy is so gentle, and pleasant, and nice to be around. That it's like just get past the visual if you don't like it, or if you if it's just too weird for you, get over it. Because who you are is about as pleasant and nice and, and kind as, as anyone I've seen. Thank you. Yeah, well, you know, I want to explain something about my transformation that directly correlates to what you just said. And that is, um, when I started this, 
But you don't have any fucking ears. Did I mention that? <laughs> your, your ears have been removed. Huh? I can't hear you. Hey, it's my excuse to some people. Like, I can't hear what you're saying. I'm sorry. I have no ears. And it's, a good, it's, it's how I get away from some people who are nasty and, and negative. I just tell them, I can't hear you. My transformation is, by and large, what saved my life after five failed suicide attempts. Oh, really? When I really was serious about my transformation, all of that went away. It hadn't happened anymore, and it ain't going to happen no, because I am truly like, happy for the first time in my life. It doesn't feel like you're on the edge of suicide. <laughs> no, for the first time in my life, I can honestly say, I'm happy with my life.